More fireworks are expected at the trial of the president's one-time campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. His defense team going on the attack against the star witness. That's Manafort's former protege. NBC Justice correspondent Pete Williams is at the courthouse in Alexandria, Virginia. Pete, good morning. Good morning to you. It was some tough cross-examination. And Rick Gates, Paul Manafort's former partner, is admitting that he's been lying and stealing for years. Manafort's lawyers hope now the jury won't like him, but that may not be enough to get a not guilty verdict. It's day three on the witness stand for Rick Gates, Paul Manafort's former right-hand man. His trusted aide, who now admits stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from his former boss during the years they worked together. Some of that money, he said, helped him carry on an affair in London that he hid from his wife. A secret life, Manafort's lawyers called it. He said he created false financial documents to help a Las Vegas investor friend. Gates said he repeatedly embezzled money from Manafort's overseas bank accounts to pay his bills. Asked why, he said, I was, in essence, living beyond my means. After a day of aggressive questioning, Manafort's lawyer, Kevin Downing, in a rare public statement, seemed satisfied. Mr. Manafort had a great day. The defense hopes to paint Gates as the real villain responsible for the crimes that prosecutors charge Manafort with committing. But in a case built on bank and tax records, muddying up Gates may not work. I think it probably was not enough to tank the case. There are enough documents that have already put, been put into evidence that corroborate what he has to say. Prosecutors disclosed that after Manafort left the Trump campaign, he continued asking for favors from Gates, who stayed on to work on the Trump inauguration. He emailed Gates to say that a banker who helped him get a loan should be considered for Secretary of the Army, and emailed again later to say the banker and his son should get tickets to the Trump inaugural ceremony. And Pete, as you mentioned, Manafort's lawyers, they seem to think they really have hurt Rick Gates' credibility. How does the jury see it? Well, well, we'll know when we get the verdict, but I remember that the defense strategy here was to say that it was Rick Gates who was really responsible for all the things that the government is blaming Paul Manafort for. And after yesterday and again today, it's very possible that the jury may think, yeah, he's the bad guy here. But on the other hand, there's all those paper documents. That's, that's exactly what I was wondering, Pete, because if, if, if the case turns on Gates and whether the prosecutors have uh, or the, the jury likes him, mm -hmm. uh, if he's been dirtied up to the point where it's a wash and the, and the, the defense has, has taken some bites out of him, is there enough on paper? I mean, is this a case that stands alone on paper that could be, lead to a conviction? Well, I think that's the point. You know, we call Gates the star witness here. He's the one that everybody's recognized. He's sort of the linchpin of making all these documents come alive. But it's certainly theoretically possible that the government could win this case without him at all, with just the strength of the documents. And certainly that's what the government's hoping for, Savannah. All right. Pete Williams. Uh, Pete, thank you. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.